Massachusetts, Mark from the United States. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Mark from the States. How are we doing today? I am doing fantastic. I hope you are as well. Um, come with me. Sit on this couch today. We're going to um, check out uh, what happened in Baltimore. I'm sure most of you already know uh, this. Um, this. We're going to watch a little clip from uh, Sky News and uh, get their uh, opinion and their point of view. Um, yeah, crazy story. Um, could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. Um, we'll go into detail uh, after we watch this video clip, but, uh, uh, pretty wild. I apparently, um, in the middle of the night, two nights ago, um, or yeah, two nights ago, I believe probably early morning for you. Uh, a cargo ship ran into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, also known just as the Key Bridge, and uh, brought the whole thing down. Hit one of the support structures, one of the pylons, and uh, the whole bridge, the majority of it, collapsed. It's horrifying. You see some cars on the bridge. As it's going down, you see cars just passing over right before it gets hit, hopefully, you know, hoping that they made it to the section of the bridge. And we'll, we'll jump out right here. Hopefully we'll see the bridge, you know, they made it to this portion. Uh, if they were coming this way, uh, yeah, I don't know how, because it, it goes on this way quite a bit and just fell right into the the channel river there. Um, a lot of there were several workers who were filling potholes on the bridge at that hour. Workers worked that hour because it's less traffic. Um, and they are presumed to be lost. I, I believe at this point they've recovered uh, or saved two. Um, but the rest, they've... Uh, are presumed um, passed away. So uh, they've now on to the uh, recovery portion of the deal. So it's just been really a shock um, that something like this could happen. Um, Sky News is going to go into how did it happen. So uh, be interested. There's tons of videos out there, of course. I enjoy Sky News. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's start. No bridge is designed to withstand an impact with a ship as big as the Dali. Laden with containers, it would have weighed almost 100,000 tons. Officials said the crew had issued a mayday call wow. and reported a loss of power. They dropped their anchor, but with so much momentum, they would have been helpless as they headed for Baltimore's key bridge. If the propeller suddenly stops, the flow of water over the rudder is reduced. But on a ship of that type, it's very, very difficult to maneuver. And I'm sure that the, the, the command of the ship and the pilots did utmost to try and avoid that collision, even by going hard to port um, to avoid the, the pier. But obviously it's not been to no effect. It's been too little too late. The Dali left the port of Baltimore <laughs> at 12.45 at night, heading out to the key bridge that spans the Patapsco River, destined for Sri Lanka. It should have followed the navigational channel, passing between red and green buoys, but it veered off course to strike the bridge support. Yeah, I find that really weird. Um, I mean, if they lost power and they just kept it straight, <laughs> right, they would have just gone right underneath. But that's me speaking from a point of just not knowing anything about shipping, how to, you know, pilot a ship, how to you know, react in an, in, in an instant like this. Um, it's just, you know, it lost power. And when you see it sp sp sped up, I don't know if they'll show it, but it looked like it just turns right into it. Like it was heading underneath, no problem. And that, you know, here at the end, it just veers right into the, 
the column. It's so, so bizarre. I don't know if that is because of the anchor in the water or, you know, pulled it that way. I don't know. I don't know. Um, you see it have these, you know, these little island protection. But this is, this right here uh, is power lines. <laughs> and there's several more that go both ways, you know. They have uh, these, like, little protection around these power lines, of all things. Um, but nothing in front of the main support here. Take a closer look at the CCTV with a ship here on the left. Four minutes before the crash, the vessel's Lost lights power. go out with total loss of power and propulsion for around 60 seconds. There's a cloud of smoke, perhaps as the engines fire up, but then power was lost once again. See how it's at turning? At 28, traveling at just under nine miles an hour, it's smashed Why? into one of the pillars. Four seconds later, the bridge collapses, uh. constructed as a single steel section supported by columns. Once one span falls, the rest quickly follow. To so if we the bridge, go back just under here, nine miles an hour, it's smashed into one of the see pillars. See vehicles here. Four seconds. Later, and you'll see, um, you know, cars uh, driving by. Um, these are workers who are <laughs> awful. Later, the bridge collapses, constructed as a single steel section supported by columns. Once one span falls, the rest quickly follow. The rest of it is dragged down and the last Incredible. man then falls down because there's just so much going on. It's like a domino effect. It's a right domino effect across. all the way across. But it's not the structure that failed, it's the lack of an effective barrier to stop the collision in the first place. So in a modern bridge, what we do is we need to provide a means of stopping the ship from hitting the bridge at its column supports. So you've got those supports in the middle there. What we would do is build an island off the seabed, fairly gently sloping one, so that if the ship were to try and hit the bridge, and of course it runs up this underwater island so it comes short of the columns so therefore there's no chance of damage to the bridge when the baltimore bridge was built in the 1970s ships were a third of the size and the protection needed far less why the baltimore bridge wasn't retrofitted with better protective yeah. barriers is why? unclear money the authorities will want to know whether there are others vulnerable to a similar disaster thomas moore sky news yeah i mean it's obvious because of uh, money <laughs> it would be millions of dollars to have to build all those things I'm sure I'm sure it was thought of I'm sure some people had made a point to say hey you need this but uh, then the number crunchers uh, were looked going well I don't, I don't know if we can afford that or want to pay for that but yeah uh, it's going to be interesting to see if a lot of the other bridges need that sort of thing. Uh, if we'll see in a year from now how many have actually acted upon this disaster and and actually tried to you know build these if they needed them, build these uh, safety features. Um, essentially, asking we'll see if we learn from this now uh there's been some wild speculations of terrorism or uh you know cyber attack i don't believe it's terrorism one if you're looking to damage and you know the most you can with possible human life being lost you're not going at 12 30 at night when the traffic is at its minimum you're not B, you know, that's A. B, you're not going to send out a mayday call. Because when they did do that, when they sent out the mayday call, they stopped traffic on both sides of the bridge. So only the vehicles that had already gone through were left on the bridge. And that's what, because even at 1230 at night, there's still plenty of traffic that goes over it. And the loss of life could have been, you know, 20 times greater. Um, but they made the mayday call. They blocked traffic from uh, entering the bridge. And uh, so they wouldn't have, if it was terrorism, obviously it wouldn't have done that. 
um, cyber terrorism? Could uh, somebody have, you know, shut the power off, taken control of the ship? I mean, veered it right before the thing. It sure, when you speed it up, it sure looks that way. I, I guess we won't know until later why it veered toward the pylon. Or, you know, a lot of speculation right now, but uh, the cyber terrorism thing too. Why are you waiting to do it at 1230? Now, the only thing possible with the cyber terrorism is it's a practice run. And that could be something. Um, if you know someone wants to see if what they're doing can work, you know, you do it, you know. But again, um, still, <clears throat> you would think you'd want to do it when you had the better, you know, it's more crowded. But uh, um, yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. Um, Appreciate a lot of you uh, uh, mentioning it to me and uh, sending out the prayers to all the loved ones and family uh, who are affected by this. And I could totally agree with all of you. It's 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 a bummer. Um, but the, the real question now is, um, will we do anything about it? And uh, this is a really busy port. <laughs> and it's going to be out of service for a long time. So you can see if it were uh, at the hands of someone else, you can see the benefit because of it just uh, blocking a major port. And, you know, if this happened to, like, say, the entrance, one of the bridge going into the New York Harbor, which is a huge port or, you know, something like that, um, the the effect would be far greater. Um, this is a busy, busy port, but it's certainly not the biggest in the States. <clears throat> but you're going to see the effect here. Ships are uh, stuck. <laughs> uh, you know, they're uh, anchored, uh, and they can't go anywhere, these cargo ships. And then there's a bunch of ships that were coming in that have to kind of reroute. So it's caused a big deal. A rippling effect, if you will, just like the bridge. So, yeah, it's it's wild. It really is. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have experience in, in uh, maritime business. You can maybe explain to me why the ship would veer to the right like that once it lost power. Maybe pilot air or them just trying to... I, it just it seemed to me that the power was lost as they were going straight and would have just gone right underneath. But um, so, yeah, it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts. Uh, so, um, yeah, crazy. Praying for those families, though. Awful. Just awful. All right, everyone. Have a great day. And uh, we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Mark from the States, Mark from the States, it's Mark, and he's from